I would strongly recommend uh, buying a used one. You could get a, a ND uh, 2016, 17, or 18 for pretty cheap. And yeah, you don't have to get a, a high trim model. You could get a lower trim model, and, and I recommend that you build it out yourself because the performance parts that you get on uh, on like the, the club or the higher trim or the Grand Touring, they're, they're still not going to be as good as uh, as an aftermarket part in my opinion for example like the suspension is way better the the brake pads uh, the sway bars that, that i just got and i would say the the only real uh real reason why you should get like a higher trim model is to get the seats for the the ricardo seats because uh they're pretty nice they have a microphone and a speaker in it but I think uh, when, when you're doing high speeds, because I changed out the exhaust, because I got headers done, and then the exhaust got done, and the car is pretty loud for, for what it is. So the the speaker and the mic kind of kind of useless when, <laughs> when you're doing high speeds and and the top is down. So man, maybe it might have been better if uh, if I just got better aftermarket seats, I guess. Have, everything's gonna be a trade-off when uh, when you start modifying the car, and and also for the wheels, the you could get better aftermarket wheels. You could get wider wheels for the for the calipers, the rotors, the brake pads. You could definitely get a better brake kit. It's definitely gonna cost you a lot of money though, because the shit's not definitely not cheap. And then uh, well, whether or not you do the the work yourself, you you can save on labor. So I actually got the car back the other day and I got the sway bars put on and um, they kind of fixed the tune so they used to stutter in 6th gear from uh, around 3000 RPM uh, 70 miles an hour to 75 and also in 5th gear to uh, 60 to 65 in 5th gear and, and around 3000 miles and it had a slight stutter but I haven't felt it since I've been driving it, I drove it about maybe 150 miles, and it's pretty responsive. I actually have to, I have to give it less gas now when I take it off because I, I feel like I'm, I don't know if it's because I didn't have the car for a week, but I, I feel like I'm giving it too much gas when I'm taking off, and it, it revs up to uh, to 7,300 pretty nicely. So for for the sway bars. I, I don't think that I, I ran the car hard enough to to really feel the difference. I honestly don't feel the difference. On maybe I'm, I would have to get this on the track to to really feel it. But it, it's kind of a confidence booster in the sense that I did everything to the suspension that I could to to make it the best, I guess. And. I would say I'm, <laughs> I'm pretty much done with this car because I, I definitely spent, uh, I would say, more than twice the amount of money I, I originally planned on spending. But if, if I were to do anything else, I think that I would, get a, I would upgrade the rotors. And then I'm not sure if I, if I should do the, the pads or not. But I'll do the rotors and then... I was talking to uh, the owner of Saki Bomb, and he said that they're uh, they're prototyping an oil cooler, so that's something that I will look into uh, for longevity for the car. And it's uh, it, it's pretty cool that uh, the shops do uh, research and development for for different car parts because they get to design uh, car parts that are that they can use and that they can sell. So I, I thought that, that that's amazing. I, lo I love that. Oh, and also for the interior, I have to do a hard wire, so I have to, uh, I have to figure out what piece to get and then where, where to do the, the tap. I'm, I might do it in an upper light or maybe the fuse box. I'm not sure if there's a fuse box on this side, but there's one in, on the inside driver's side and on inside the hood. Um, I kind of want to get a stubby for the, the antenna, but it honestly doesn't bother me. And I, I don't see the benefit of having it. And, and also for the door jams. Uh, you, you could get a... It's a, it's a more firmer grommet so that when you open and close the door, 
supposedly it increases rigidity to to the structure of your car and, and also uh, I was talking to the shop owner in uh, regards to a roll bar because he, he actually showed me how uh, how the, the pieces are inside the stock pieces and, and it's kind of it's kind of light you know if, uh, not knock on wood if, if the car did turn around I'm, I'm not sure if, uh, if it would protect me having a, a, a stock roll bar versus if I got you know, one piece where they have uh, uh, four connections. But he, he said that that would run around six hours of labor. I think the roll bar would run me maybe a thousand dollars. I'm not hundred percent sure. This is what my car looks like underneath the the rear sway bar. They they actually cut the front one because it was easier to to cut it and then just to replace it versus having to take out all of the top pieces and. The, the original sway bar, it, it was as thick as my, my finger. Or maybe a little less. It was, uh, it was kind of shocking, actually. And if, if I knew it was that, uh, that skimpy, I would have changed it out earlier. Oh, and, and another thing that I, I wanted was uh, when, when this battery goes out, they have a 7-pound battery. I think this is, uh, it might be like 15 pounds. So they have a 7-pound seven, seven battery. It's just kind of expensive though. It's uh, I think it's 450, and then there's a a battery bracket because you wouldn't be able to use this because it's a uh, it's skinnier. So you need to buy a bracket, and that's like a buck fifty. So it's mad expensive. That's why I didn't do it. So I'm, I kind of want to use the parts on my car before I, I replace them. And uh, if you know of anybody that needs like uh, stock parts, let me know. Like suspension of the, I probably won't sell the headers because it has a cat on it, but the exhaust. And and I have uh, the club suspension too, if anybody needs that. So pretty much uh, I'm almost done with school, so well, one more time, one more test, and then well, whatever happens, happens. And then I'm probably going to go cross country after that. Kind of want to, I kind of want to go cross country right now because... I'm pretty sure the weather isn't that bad. I'm gonna try and do a. I'm gonna go south, so I'll probably go down to LA, Las Vegas, maybe Arizona. We'll see. Cause I actually haven't been to New Mexico. I'm pretty sure there's nice parks in New Mexico that I want to go to. And my little brother lives in Houston, so I could visit him. And then I wanted to go to the Florida Keys. And where else? Uh, New Orleans. I want to go to Yellowstone, but I'm not sure of, about the weather because I'm gonna be running my summer tires, <laughs> and it's not gonna <laughs> it's not gonna be good in the snow. So I'm, I'm definitely not trying to drive this car through snow again. And so I wanted to go to the Florida Keys and on the tail of the dragon. It's in Tennessee, and oh, hopefully I'll be alright driving over because I, I feel like every time i, I do a, a cross-country drive yeah you're basically a couple feet away from death because one well, one person gets into your lane and then you're done pretty much and my, my car is pretty small so it, it's definitely not going to hold up to oh i got a ding man i got a ding in my driver's side that's why you should always park your car far away from uh from other cars no i never park it in the roads because people fuck it up without thinking twice. And, oh yeah, and, and then uh, I'll probably stop by uh, New York. But the, the thing about that is uh, I actually have to go to New York for a wedding. New York City and uh, end of April. So maybe I should table the trip. Probably I won't because I'm, I think uh, after I come back, I'm going to be more focused on getting a job. So I need to brush up on uh, my tech skills and my interviewing skills and it's a numbers game. You, you just have to apply to as many places as possible, get as much experience and, and market yourself properly. And I'm, I'm praying I get something, you know, before the, the recession hits because well, once the recession hits, people are going to be pretty fucked. Because well, most places won't have the budget to, to hire you know, new people on, so 
de definitely try and get a job within the next quarter, I would say. And I'm not sure like where I'd, I should leave my investments to. Should I leave them in or should I just cash them out? Because I, I feel like we're definitely due for a recession. We're 11 years over. And there was one time I, I put a G into an investment and I lost 90% of it. It dissolved. So kind of don't want that to happen to, to what I have right now. All right, I'm, I'm way off topic, so I'll, uh, let me know if you guys have any questions about the car. I would say that this car is definitely, I would say it's my number two. Number two for funnest car in the world. The first one is the 93 RX-7 modded, but this car is a, a close second, you know. It's pretty good. That definitely ND1 modified, definitely way funner than uh, ND2 stock. But I'm, I'm curious... Uh, I'm curious how ND2 is gonna feel with the uh, headers, exhaust, and tune, and suspension bits. And and also when they come out with force induction, when, whenever they do. Oh, an another thing about my car is, uh, they, they said they never had a problem with modifying ND1s, 16, 17. But for my car, I, I think for the tuning, cause the, the ECU is different, the software is different. And they were saying that uh, it, it could be, you know, a fueling problem. It could be a hardware problem. But I, I, I knew it. I knew it wasn't. Because uh, the, the car companies, they always make subtle changes. They make version changes. And they, you have to compensate and, and to work around it. I'm, I'm glad that the shop was and the tuner was able to, to solve the problem. And may, maybe it's too early to tell. But... Nah, knock on wood, ho hopefully this car is, uh, it's optimal now, and I'm, I love it. It's basically like having a go-kart, and, and, and it makes you want to wake up early and, and go for a drive on the back roads or, or drop the top. I mean, if, if you look around the parking lot, it's like there's not many cars that I would even consider giving up my car for. Maybe for a Tesla performance. In the future, I'll consider one of those, but right right now, I, I like rolling through my gears. I like shifting. I like lightweight. I don't necessarily like the maintenance costs and, and the, the cost of operations because gas is pretty expensive. I actually spent uh, over four grand on gas for 2019, and I'm pretty sure I drove over 30,000 miles. I, I, I think California can attribute to uh, high gas costs. Because it's close to four dollars where I live, you have to pump premium. And if, if you lived anywhere else, like if you lived in Nebraska, it's less than half the price for gas. If, if you lived in, uh, I drove up to Canada, and actually the gas was pretty expensive up there. Maybe it's because of the location, different country. But that definitely one. When I look around the parking lot, I, I don't see. Uh, any car that I would trade my car for, but circumstances change, and maybe if I had kids, I'll consider you know a bigger car, something with four seats. Uh, I would say the the Accord is a good car, but it's heavy though. It's like a, if you're driving anything other than a Miata, it's kind of fat. It's heavy, and and it's not gonna handle as good. But I'm pretty sure the the 2.0 T is good. The, the hybrid's good. Pilot's good. But I'm, I'll, I'll say for the most part, it's like I, I almost feel sorry for for people that can't drop the top. Because all, all the other cars, are, they just seem super boring, in my opinion. Maybe, maybe if you had this for, uh, for off-roading, it'd be pretty fun. Depends on what you're using the car for. Alright, let me know if you have any questions and have a good day.